Hello, so it is um, Tuesday, January 3rd right now, it's about 12.15, just wanted to get some fresh air, come outside, sitting by the pool, you probably hear the, the waterfall right now, so I do apologize if it's a little bit loud, um, I'm actually getting a little hot out here, um, but yeah, I'm able to walk a lot better now, more normal, um, more normal pace kind of hurts around the ankles which I'll show you my legs here in a little bit but just want to give you an update about how I'm doing and stuff um, in the mornings it's always things are more rough probably just because you know you're sleeping all night you're not really moving but um, uh, so yeah this morning my my hands were really hard to uh, grip or shut and my elbow was hurting again my wrist uh, my neck was a lot more sore, but as of right now, um, you know, it does feel a lot better to open my hands. You probably can't see it, but now since I'm in the light, um, it looks a little bruised right here. Uh, there's some, it's like a brown spot, brownish yellow right here. And um, let's see here. Yeah, just that area hurts quite a bit. But, and then on this hand, I don't know, it's just, it's still tender, you know, it's not nothing to, or not anything to, like, whine about or anything, it's just, it's just sore. Um, as of right now, that's the only pain, I guess, is in my, or uh, not pain, but the only tenderness is in my hands, and just still some soreness in my neck right now, it's not as bad though from what it was this morning and just the heels I guess on my on my feet so I'll go ahead and show you my feet now um, took off my socks a little bit ago so you're gonna see like little crisscross patterns but um, but yeah that's not part of the symptoms So yeah, as you can see, my legs have gotten a lot better, um, just even from three days ago. A lot of the, the larger nodules and um, have, they have they've gone down and the coloring has gone back to normal. Um, there's some areas and some bumps that are still there and they kind of itch a little bit, but um, other than that, I mean, it just, it's completely different. It feels so much better. Um, the only thing I'm worried about now is just the, the joint pain, but they actually, like I said in my yesterday's video, is that the, uh, the blood test that we did was to uh, check out the inflammatories and uh, just like my muscles and we took a vitamin, T, vitamin D test yesterday, so uh, we're still waiting to hear back from those results. Hey! Oh <laughs> Is it? Not so Here we go! Oh. <laughs> That's kind of chilly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the other day I kind of promised that I was going to um, kind of go over the book that I've been reading from Dr. Craig Run uh, Runbachen. It was the Valley Fever, uh, the Silent Epidemic, and um, it was like $8 on iBooks. So there's just a lot of information in that book. Um, I haven't finished the whole thing quite yet, but um, just the 
the stuff that I've gone through so far. There's def definitely a lot of interesting things that I, I do need to know about, things that I've gone through, and um, things that I need to just prepare my mind for in case, you know, some certain things did happen, then I'd be like, okay, I, well, I know this is part of the process. I'm gonna go through just kind of like what I've highlighted so far, and um, I know a lot of it may not make sense or anything, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just um, say what uh, stuck out to me. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a list of terms of, for the valley fever. And there's one called desert rheumatism, R-H-E-U-M-A-T-I-S-M. -E and um, it includes arthritis symptoms. All right, another interesting fact uh, from this book from Dr. Craig Runbachen is the majority of valley fever cases are in the I-10 corridor between Phoenix and Tucson and Maricopa, Pima, and Pinal counties. So for um, contracting the, the disease, um, it's what it's called an arthrospore. It's these spores that exist um, as a mycelium, which, is, which means mold. And um, it's on the soil surface, typically to a depth of six inches. And then a disturbance of the soil sends the spores flying into the air. And the valley fever infection and transmission usually occurs when a human or animal inhales the desert soil fungal spore. The endospores uh, may travel through the blood. And valley fever is not contagious person to person. Once the arthrospores are inhaled from the environment, about 40% of people will become symptomatic while 60% develop minimal symptoms or none at all. Typically, the symptoms occur within one to four weeks. Below is a list of the greatest reported symptoms to the least. All figures represent a percentage of 100. Fatigue, 84.4. Cough 66.9, shortness of breath 58.7, fever 54.1, night sweats 52, chest pain 48.8, chills 47.8, joint pain 47.2, headaches 42.45, muscle pain 41.1, wheezing 37.4, rash 33.9, stiff neck 29.45, sore throat 27.9, weight loss 24.6, coughing up blood. 9.2. I would say throughout that list, um, again, all these, um, everything I'm saying right now is coming from the, the book from Dr. Craig Rombachen, so the credit is going towards this book. Um, and um, I would say out of all those symptoms, fatigue, uh, it's the highest one on this list, and I never really felt like super tired, you know? Maybe the only days I felt tired was after I've had a long day, um, but never just downright tired all the time. Um, I didn't really have a bad cough, just a couple times, uh, just here and there. I would say shortness of breath. Um, I, ha I did have a fever, it fluctuated quite a bit. Um, the night sweats for sure. I had chest pain, the chills, joint pain, headaches, muscle pain. I never wheezed, uh, maybe except for one time when I thought I was having a panic attack when I first started Conazole. Um, but that was just a one time wheeze, but I don't know what that was. Um, I had a rash. Uh, my stiff neck is kind of coming in now, but. Um, um, and that's about it. Oh, weight loss too. Like I said, I've lost about 10 pounds so far, but I think the past few days, I, the past two days or so, I've been eating a lot more, so. Uh, I feel like I'm actually uh, gaining a little bit more weight, so I'll check that in a couple days at Caitlin's house to see what my weight is. The patients that were sick with valley fever for greater than six months, so um, the average was about 120 days they were sick with valley fever. 74% of the patients missed work due to the coxie on average of one month. Uh, so average 15, uh, 14 days per person uh, they missed work. I think I've been around 14, 15 days maybe, maybe 16 or so, um, but I go back Thursday hopefully and uh, we'll see how that goes. 75% uh, were unable to do their usual activities for more than three months. 
average uh, was 47 days for them to do their regular activities. Um, as I mentioned before, it's been a couple days, but I'm going to be on fluconazole uh, for six months straight, at, for at least right now. Uh, he said it could be up to a year, just depending on how the progress goes. But um, so fluconazole for six months, I have to do um, liver functional tests, um, so blood work for my my liver once a month for the next six months, and then X-rays just to see if my nodule has gone down or let's see how that works. Um, and hopefully the cavity will go away. All right, so this one's kind of interesting, um, but it's called erythema nodosum. It's spelled E-R-Y-T-H-E-M-A. And then the second word is N-O-D-O-S-U-M. And this is another common rash, which is felt to be hypersensitivity type of reaction. Uh, it is more common in females. It has several qualities. The reason why I'm talking about this one is because uh, listen to these um, um, the description of it. Painful red nodules below the skin along the interior shins. Sounds a lot like my legs. The rash is considered to be a good sign as it is associated with the development of cellular immune response and production antibodies, uh, production of antibodies to combat the infection. And so that's what I was talking about earlier. Uh, maybe a good thing that my legs did what they did because they were created the antibodies to fight the infection. Um, so. Again, this is something I would like to ask the specialist if this is something that he thinks that I have um, is the erythema not not of them. All right, this is something else I, I really want to ask the specialist too. Um, desert rheumatism. Uh, desert, R-H-E-U-M-A-T-I-S-M. -E it's an arthritis type pain that may be associated with valley fever. And it's often seen with Erythema nodosum, the ones that we just got been talking about on my legs. And also what's seen in desert rheumatism is uh, pain in the ankles, knees, and wrists is common. Also joint pain is felt to be immune related. Most patients who contract valley fever and recover will not get, an, uh, will not get another coxy illness. They are immune protected. When suspicious of valley fever, consider starting antifungal therapy before diagnostic confirmation. In this situation, that's what we did because we didn't know for sure if my blood test would come back positive for valley fever and my symptoms were getting worse, so that's why I was uh, starting the antifungal uh, medication sooner than what, uh, than what we knew. And, but a negative blood test does not rule out valley fever. Repeat testing can demonstrate a positive test. This may be a sign the immune system has recognized the fungal infection and is fighting it. Um, also, titers, T-I-T-E-R-S, I believe is how it's spelled. Uh, titers are a method of quantifying antibodies. The higher the level of antibodies detected in the serum, the worse the case. So, pretty much, um, I believe what the specialist would do is um, just from a blood test, he would, you know, just look at the, uh, the level of antibodies, and he'll be able to see how serious my case is, see how far along I am, and that's how they kind of help um, treat me, I guess, from here on out. So um, that's another question I want to ask: see if they're going to be leveling my my titers. Um, or just stay on the medication, not do that. So I actually forgot to charge my battery last night. So it's going to be dying here shortly, and I don't want to get cut off in the middle of my sentence. So, um, so yeah, this is going to be all I'm going to do for now, for, for right now on the uh, information from what I've read so far in the book. I definitely recommend you uh, just taking a look at it, look get more serious about valley fever because um, I mean it could be infecting you know your child or you know your your grandparents or something and uh, just it, somebody you love just want to make sure you can get it properly diagnosed because uh, it may just seem like a cold or something that's been lasting forever so definitely get it checked out and um, uh, just take a look at the book if you don't want to take a look at the book then just find some more information online and 
but yeah, I just want you to be aware of what it possibly could be and the uh, dangers and and everything that goes along with uh, Valley Fever. So, um, probably do some more scenery shots later or something. It's really nice, and I, I really want to stay outside, but I'm gonna go get some lunch right now with Caitlin, and I think that's about it. All right, bye.